One of my biggest inspiration for music and guitar is actually other instruments. So I want to show you five blues lines that are coming more from piano and horn. So for me, I actually checked a lot of these lines even more, I would say, than you know John Mayer or BB King or these kind of bluesier, uh, bendier line. Which of course it's amazing. Cool. So I'm going to show you the five lines. Let's check it out. The first line is this one. Uh, uh, uh. Play it again. One, two, three, four, one. Right, so we have this kind of line that starts, I mean, the key of F. So it's a blues, basically a blues line over F or F7. So I'm articulating the triad, playing the one and three. It's kind of like a. a chromatic thing that is going again to the triad. This is A and C, so part of the F major triad. So the first kind of part is this. And then the same thing. A little kind of embellishment. Really, really cool. Very simple, but again, very effective. So let's listen to it in time. If you're filling out this video, please support by smashing, crashing, plucking the like button and also subscribing to the channel so you won't miss cool videos uh, that you might do. Uh, Thanks. Uh. Try that flat 3 or sharp 9 if you will, if it's with F7, sharp 9 like that. The second line is this. It's really articulating F very clearly because I'm basically playing chromatic approaches to the chord tones, the one, three, five of the chord mainly. Five, three, one, four, three, flat, three, three, one. So that, it's a very common kind of thing to do. Basically, you're trying to say one, three, five, but you're doing it in a slightly better and a little bit delayed way. Let's hear it a little bit in time. One, two, three, four, one. I'll say the numbers. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, so it's kind of cool. It's actually a good exercise to say the numbers. It's kind of confusing, but it's fun. So again, check out how it lays down on the chord, and you can go up, or so you can have like this big, you know, kind of like range of that line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, you can finish it here. And you can, of course, change the last note if you will. Oh, if you want to practice these blues lines, I made a free jam track here. You can just grab it. It's free. It's yours. It's totally fine. But it's nice to understand these lines and, and be able to hear them against the chord in a clear way and rhythmically as well. One of the things that I like doing is taking, uh, sometimes writing these lines, sometimes transcribing them from piano players, from horn players, like I said, because it's nice to find non-idiomatic lines. Sometimes it's really challenging, but sometimes you just discover a lot of music through that process. Um, so sometimes I'll take these lines and make sure I can play them in time, and then I'll try to play a blues or, or a simple structure I'm kind of comfortable with, and then I'll try to implement that. And then I'll also try to move and change a lot, because you, at the end of the day, you don't have to say the full sentence, you know, you can just say... Or even less than that, just, just that idea. That kind of, you know, chromatic thing to the triad. It's really, really cool. And a lot of times, if we understand uh, the fragments that take place within the line, we can learn so much more than just the line. Cool. Let's go to the next one. What I like about this line is that it has these two octave kind of register and it's very simple because it's very much staying in this position. So it's not hard to play, but it's very, very convincing and also like kind of smashing the low note, this F on beat one is always kind of strong. And um, I think knowing where you are and kind of smashing the downbeat is always a fun thing to do. So the line itself, 
is this. So really articulating the one, three, five, but going to that six. So we have the flat three to the three, a little embellishment there. Which again, very, very classic blues line in, in a lot of styles. And then from there, I'm just descending. So one, two, three, four, one, two. Now, what you can also do, you can change this a little bit if you do this. So what I did this time, I just added a chromatic note here, which is a part of the blues scale. So in that case, if I'm adding one note, instead of smashing the F, I can smash the A flat. So it will sound like this again. One, two, three, four, one, two. And as long as we know where we are and we understand the, the scale and where things land on the beat, and we can also feel it, we don't have to always think about it um, intellectually, it's nice to understand it and then kind of see exactly where it lands so you understand and know. But basically you can try and do these, these experiments. You can put a click, you can put a groove on and try and say, okay, what happens if I do one, two, three, four, one, two. Right, what happens if I change that line a little bit? And then, so basically asking myself, what happens if I change the line a little bit? What can I get from it? And how far I can take these simple ideas? Remember our first line, so. I can mix these ideas right away. Right? Very simple, so if I know these building blocks and I'm comfortable rhythmically and understanding where they are, it's very easy to mix them and match. Because it's like, yeah, you're kind of learning small building blocks of information and then you just need to ma match them, mix them, yeah, you get it. <laughs> this next line has a couple double stops, check it out. So, So basically, starting the same thing, five, six, one, so part of this F uh, articulation. And then I, right away I'm going to the six and the flat, uh, flat three. But I'm kind of sliding it so I get this kind of sound. So. And then I'm doing this slide again of this double stop from here to here and then I'm doing three notes and then just smashing the low F which always sounds good to me so and of course you can adjust the phrase and, and do a lot of other things with it but I think it's a really nice phrase one two rhythmically change it and, and hear what you hear but just take it as it is and then see how you can tweak it to make it yours. The next phrase is really really cool because it shows us how symmetrical the guitar is and how simple things are in fact. <laughs> so this goes like this. Right, so really the same phrase, which I'm kind of bending a little bit. So it's basically the almost the, the two to the flat nine, but it's like ever so slightly. You can bend it more if you feel like. And then the six, almost to the flat seven, or you can really push it to the flat seven. And then again. And then four, five, flat three, three, one. So again, a lot of times with guitar, we want to play a triad, but we actually kind of try to extend the tension a little bit until the resolution. So check out the, this line again. One, two, three, four, one, two. Of 
chorus. You can always go lower in that octave. So what would be really interesting to try and do is learn these phrases, these five phrases separately and then try to mix between them, right? So if we had the one that Right, just kind of mixing again this is maybe a little bit all over the place but just trying to grab ideas from these three phrases for example this uh, one we did here with the, um, with the double stops this one and then the one that was kind of like in this uh, neck of the wood so it doesn't matter exactly how I place them but the idea is that these um, fragments are comfortable and these building blocks are uh, you know, adjustable. So it's not like you always have to say this whole paragraph of information, rather more like a language, you can kind of break it down and use certain elements to express the ideas. Thanks so much for listening and checking it out. I hope this was cool and fun. I'll see you very soon. Peace out.